Hi everybody, uh, welcome to essentially part three of my Whiskey 101. Uh, this is the one that I'll be talking about our exceptional oak casks because the casks we use are very, very important. So hopefully this one's of interest to you. Now, the reason this one has its own little piece, its own little show, is because the casks that we age the whiskey in, the species of oak, the seasoning product, very, very important. Probably the single most important factor in the maturation of our and any whiskey, because we had an independent survey a number of years back and we discovered, uh, we, we knew it was a lot, but we discovered between 70 and 80% of the flavor and 100% of the color comes from the, the beautiful casks that we create, season, and maintain. So it's a huge factor, 80%, up to 80% of the flavor in your glass is coming from those oak casks. So it's important to have a little chat about it and, and kind of know a little bit more about it. Now, I'm gonna give you a very quick idea of the journey because the, the casks, we don't just knock them together. There's a whole process to this. Uh, we use predominantly European oak. Some people say Spanish oak, but it's European oak, the, the biological name, uh, Quercus robur. Uh, as opposed to American oak, which is Quercus alba. Those are the two main Quercae uh, that we use. There are others, Mazinara, uh, Mongolia, but those are the two that we tend to use. So, predominantly European oak in the top third of Spain. There's a couple of areas, uh, Galicia and Cantabria. Up in that northern edge of Spain, there's a lot of rainfall, beautiful big oak forests. And I've heard sort of tales that 150 plus years ago, Spanish Armada cut down a lot of the trees to make their boats, to, you know, to sail the seven seas. And now, 150 years later, we have a plentiful supply of the right age oak to use. Well, I think it's a bit fanciful, but uh, it's a great story to be able to tell anyway. So in Northern Spain, we, we maintain these trees. I've seen Stuart McPherson tag a tree that he knows that he's gonna come back to and use. Uh, so at a certain point, we, we come along, we cut down the tree that we want, one that we've identified, uh, and we leave it in the oak forest for about six months. We cut it down, we leave it to dry, sit the first six months just to dry, just to let it dry. Uh, the drying process, the drying term is two to three years, but the first six months is usually just the tree lying there. Then we take it to the sawmills and we cut these trees down. We actually leave it at the sawmills for another six months. Then we cut it into staves. Staves are the pieces of wood that we will then uh, create the casks from. And I've got a couple of examples here. Uh, this is an American oak barrel, uh, heavily charred, as you can see there. I have a, an American oak sherry cask. That, 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 the first one is a bourbon barrel. This is an American oak sherry cask stave. And then the big boy, the Spanish sherry oak stave. I'll talk about these a bit more in just a second. So we cut them down into the staves and we build the casks. Uh, now, the building of the cask is, is quite amazing. I've tried it myself and I've seen these guys with the rings and they're putting the staves in together and it takes them seconds to do. And me and the team were trying to build it and it was a comedy of errors. There's just pieces of wood flying everywhere and uh, absolutely mess. These guys are so skillful. And then they bend the wood, the wood in, they wet the wood and bend it and wet it and bend it and wet it and bend it until you get that wonderful barrel shape. Then they fill the barrels or casks uh, full of water and pressure test them to make sure that they've got a good seal. And you know, if they do have a, a leak, then they patch it, or sometimes they have to rebuild the barrels. But these guys are so good that they tend to get it right pretty much every time. Uh, and then once you've got your, your beautiful sherry, uh, American or uh, European oak cask, you then have to, to char or toast the inside. Now there's two different elements here. Uh, with our European oak, we toast. We give it a little toast. We just flame it on the inside. Uh, you can see here, you can see it's just a very, very light burning of the oak, right? Light on that one. This is American oak, but this is a, a sherry cask as well. A bit heavier, char on that one, or, or toast I should say. But the American X bourbon cask, look at the char on that, crocodile skin. Different, uh, this is an X bourbon cask, so they do it slightly differently, but essentially you burn that initial layer to break down the chemical barrier, to break down the physical and chemical barrier so that the liquid can pass into the staves in the barrel and start to extract those wonderful, wonderful flavors. Now, once you have your cask intact, uh, you, this is, the sawmills are actually down, uh, sorry, the, uh, the, the, the cooperages that are building the casks are actually down in southern Spain in an area called Jerez de la Frontera. Sounds amazing, 
but it just means Jerry is on the front line. Fantastic. Uh, so our cooperages build the casks and then we fill them. We take them to the, the sherry bodegas in Jerez. Uh, Jerez is very famous for its sherry. Take it to the sherry bodegas, fill them full of predominantly dry Oloroso sherry. There's a multitude of different types of sherries, all the way from a very light, crisp fino, all the way to a particular style that tastes, it looks like motor oil, it's black and thick and very sugary, called Pedro Jimenez, or PX for short. Uh, but Olor dry Olor Oloroso is right in the middle there. We've, over years of uh, experimentation, we've discovered that this is the best type of sherry to age the casks in. So we fill them full of dry Oloroso sherry, and we leave them to season for a period of time, about 18 months, but sometimes it can go up past two years, two plus years. So, just to cover back off on this, two to three years just air drying the wood. Two to three years drying. And then another almost two years, maybe past two years seasoning. So approximately, maybe up to about five, maybe even up to about six years, just air drying and seasoning these casks. Then we empty out the sherry, and we, we reuse it, or sometimes we sell it on to be used as sherry vinegar. Uh, it can't actually legally be called or sold as sherry at this point. It has to be a byproduct. Uh, and we, we then send these casks whole. We don't break them down. We ship them whole. Think of all that dead space in those shipping containers. We ship them whole to protect the integrity of the cask up the coast of Spain, past France, past a horrible country called England, up to a lovely country called Scotland. And that's where we take it to the distillery. And we fill it with new make spirit. It can't be called scotch at this time. Because if you watch one of my earlier shows, you'll know that it can't be called scotch until it's been aged for a minimum of three years. So new make spirit goes into these wonderful casks and we put it in the warehouses to mature and to, to take its time and just relax and enjoy itself and become the scotch that we know and love. So a very, very long process. And just so that you know, in bourbon barrels, they actually oven dry or kill and dry their pieces of wood. It takes four to six weeks to kill and dry a stave for a bourbon barrel. We air dry. It takes two to three years to fully air dry the wood. And we do that to protect the biologicals. If you think about it, uh, if you put a piece of bread into a toaster, it comes out as toast, it can never go back to being bread. It's been denatured. And that's precisely what oven drying staves does. It denatures the biological components that we're trying to protect. Um, we're, we have lignans, tannins and vanillins. Those are our main three uh, flavour giving compounds, esters as well maybe, but there's phenols and there's all sorts of other biologicals, but those are the main ones that we're looking for. And we're trying to protect those wonderful biologicals that will impart the flavour. So air drying helps to protect all those wonderful biologicals. Now, we have multiple cask sizes. Uh, the American oak barrels, uh, we call them barrels, or American standard barrel, it's uh, 200 litres. And then uh, we, we predominantly use uh, sherry butts and puncheons. Those are 500 litres. Those are the big boys. Uh, I think this one is a sherry butt because it's got a lovely wide arc to the stave there. These are big, 500 litres, as are the puncheons. And then my favourite, to be quite honest, are the hoggies, the hogsheads. In the middle, you've got a smaller 250 litre cask uh, and they're called the hogsheads. So they call them the hoggies up at the warehouse. And I like those because they impart a more intense flavour. So when I see it's a European hogshead, Love to see that, that's fantastic. And then uh, I did mention the two species of oak, Quercus alba and Quercus rober, uh, that we use to create those casks. So that's a, a basic sort of run through of the casks and the process and the kind of top line, if you will. We can go deeper in another video if you want more information or just reach out to me for more information. But very quickly, uh, before I go, uh, I'm, I've got two quick anecdotes for you. Uh, one is, the last time I was at the distillery, I discovered something in the warehouses that, ladies and gentlemen, made a little part of me die inside. I discovered that every cask has a little label like this one with a barcode on it. And I asked Stuart McPherson, what's the barcode for? And he said, oh, the guys walk about with a reader, a handheld reader, and you scan the barcode and it comes up on the computer what the cask is more about it, tasting notes, uh, the maturation arc, how it's doing, all the information you could possibly want to know about that particular cask. And ladies and gentlemen, I was heartbroken, absolutely heartbroken. I thought there was just one little guy who just knew, he just knew all of the casks, 
how's this one doing? Oh, I don't know. Ask me, Stevie. Stevie just, that's all he does. Taste them all. I thought somebody just knew. Uh, but I think we have uh, upwards of 400,000 casks maturing at the distillery at this very moment. So that's an awful lot of casks to be looking after. I just, I just had this picture of wee Stevie waking up every morning in the warehouse. Oh God, not again. The wife's going to kill me. Uh, so no, so we get a little barcode to, to track the maturation arc of the casks. And the other thing that I wanted to impart on you, all the way through my five years as National Brand Ambassador, there was a thing that I tried to also do, and that was to try and break down some of the barriers. Uh, and scotch can be expensive, right? Uh, and I try to always say to people that there, there are different price points. And if you try everything we have from the Macallan 10, there's a seven year old we used to sell in uh, Italy, but Macallan 10, all the way up to the most expensive bottle of scotch in the world, which is the Macallan, $1.5 million. You've tried everything and you prefer Macallan 10. All that's happened is you've saved yourself an awful lot of money, that's all. There's no right and wrong answers. Everyone's palate is different. Just because it's older and more expensive doesn't necessarily make it better. That's it. Generally speaking, the longer you leave a cask to lie down and the more the warehouse guys say, oh, this one's special, the more you can trust it. That's going to be an amazing whiskey. Uh, the other thing, I, I, a story that I picked up along the way was the, the cost isn't necessarily it's a better whiskey. It's, it's associated with the cost it costs us. If you think about it, we start off with a cask, right? 500 litres. We lose 2 to 4, 2 to 4% every year. Angel share, evaporation, because the casks are breathable. So after 12 years, you start off with this, after 12 years, you've got that much left. You've lost that much through evaporation. And you've had to pay a little guy to look after that cask for 12 years. They usually have a limp. But then, by the time you get to 18 years, you've got this much liquid left. You've got less liquid. And you've had to pay that little guy for another, an extra six years. He's joined a union, he thinks he has rights. So of course it's cost us more to get to this point, so we have to charge more, that's all. But if you try everything and you prefer your Macallan 12, your Sherry Oak 12, that's your go-to, fabulous. All I ask is you try as many as possible and see which one's your favorite. So there we are, ladies and gentlemen. That's my little piece for today. Uh, I'll be doing another one on Monday uh, at 2 p.m. usual time slot, Monday at 2 p.m. Pacific, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern. So if you have any questions you'd like to, to reach out, if you've got any subject matter you'd like me to cover, more than happy to, uh, to tailor the next couple to you. So let me know. I'm going to sign off on this one. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.